everyone to Dreams and Seams video blog. We are the babies, Jessica and Matt, and today we're just going to be talking about Matt's swing a little bit. Um, I thought this would be interesting because if I've noticed that Matt's swings ha has had a lot of changes over the years, then I know he can definitely explain all of those changes and kind of why those changes have come about. A lot of people when they think about when they saw you play in high school, and especially for me, the one thing I remember the most was the leg, the leg kick, and how your hands were just very active. Like a tornado. Yeah. And so, what was the biggest change from high school to college in your swing? Um, I think each level that you move up, that you know the game's gonna get faster, um, and you have to adjust with the game. So. In high school, I could definitely, I could, the guys were only throwing 70, 75 at the most. So I could get away with all that hand movement and that really big leg kick um, as you move up in levels. Um, say college, for instance, the guys are throwing harder. Uh, you add in the secondary pitch. Um, they got good curveballs or good changeup. Um, that'll really show the flaws in your swing. So and also you don't have the room of error to get away with with all the hand movement it was just complicating my swing and it was hard to replicate and have success at you know the next level so I just kind of toned it down a little bit um, at the I beginning, get, of, at your the beginning of the college yeah. career so your college swing didn't have much changes that I remember at least besides your senior year when you had this crazy wide stance and your front foot was way behind your back foot in the stance. So kind of what was the reasoning or your mentality for that change? Um, I don't know. My swing kind of changed a lot throughout my college career. I mean, not a lot, probably two or three times, but I was just always trying to adjust to, you know, different velocities, different pitches, secondary pitches coming at me. Um, and you know just different attack methods game plans from pitchers and catchers on the other team but uh that wide stance uh, yeah that was senior year it's funny you bring that up because that was seriously just i don't know randomly one day i, was, I said uh, i just got these glasses the, or the prescription glasses first and first game first inner squad with it and it has the nose piece right right here so i kind of that stance, you know, yeah, it was really drastic. I was low, wide, and it helped me uh, open up my face and look at the picture better. And it was against uh, Matthew Kinney. Uh, Shout out, Kinney. Little lefty um, <laughs> side armor uh, at Belmont. And never had success against him. Never, I mean, I don't think, never had a hit freshman through senior year up to this point. I was just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna try this. Uh, feels weird, but I did it that one game or that one inter squad against him. Uh, saw the ball really well against him and hit a line drive up the middle for a base hit. Uh, first time I ever gotten a hit off of him in inter squad. So it's kind of weird, like that baseball. You talk about baseball players being superstitious, and yeah, we are definitely probably the most superstitious people out there. So. That just kind of clicked right there, and I took it into the season, and that's kind of the backstory behind that. So this will be your third year in pro ball since you've been drafted, and I always tell people that I've seen you tweak and play with your swing more in, well, it's just really two years, but going on three years than all of the other high school, college, any time that I've really, you know, seen you swing consistently. So. What's the reason for that? You're just around more guys that you trust, that have experience, just so kind of what's the reason for that? Uh, I think just around more guys that um, coach big leaguers, coached a lot of minor league guys around the game for 140 games a season plus the spring training, um, and also coaches that, you know, had successful careers in the big leagues. Uh, obviously, they we're doing something right so what they're going to teach is you know it might not work for everybody but it's something to try uh, something to kind of play around with and uh, to see if it will translate and work for me um, 
I guess one of the coaches that I kind of connected with is Jay Gibbons. He's uh, he played with Baltimore Orioles in the t er, early 2000s, um, and he was my coach when I first got drafted in Low A at Great Lakes. Um, and we were they weren't really supposed to mess with our swing that much in Low A, uh, just because it was our first year draft or first year being drafted, um, just kind of letting us get our feet wet and get a feel for pro ball. But then this past year, he was also with me in Rancho. Um, and like senior year, I took that big white stance into pro ball. Had a good year, uh, didn't hit power numbers that I wanted. Um, and then the next year, this past season in Rancho, I had a pretty good year, but still there's some room for improvement in the power number category, get some more doubles, some more um, home runs, um, just increase the launch angle. Um, I don't know. He he had a good Gibby had a good year or a good uh, career in the big leagues, hitting home runs. He was known as a power threat at the plate yeah. and hit a lot of doubles. So uh, you know, if that's what the Dodgers want from me is more power numbers, and you know, why not listen to somebody that you know made a good nine-year career out of it. You no, know, the other big change in your swing in your was your feet were really close together and your hands were really high and I did not like the way that looked at all so what was the kind of the thought process with that change? It was just trying like so we would work with our hitting coach before games obviously in the cage um, it was Gibby and he was just trying to he was just throwing out suggestions for because the Dodgers did say they like and I'm, I'm a good hitter, um, but they do want to see some more power numbers, and Gibby was just throwing out suggestions for me to try to get a feel for it. It was kind of an exaggeration, mm -hmm. but it was just helping me get – that the drills that I was doing in the cage, we kind of translated it back into um, the games just to see what it was going to do because that's, that's where you experiment is in the games in pro ball. It kind of sounds kind of weird, but – when you're going through adjustments and stuff, they want you to take those weird, uncomfortable feeling adjustments into the game and just see how you react, see what kind of changes that it may bring. Um, yeah, they were drastic, but it, we were trying to work on uh, getting more drive with my hips and uh, legs. And Gibby thought that when I was down there in my low, crazy stance that I'd started senior year of college and the first year it was take it was you know taking away some of that power and so then everything that we've talked about up until this point obviously it's not everything that you've kind of played with or tweaked with but has really been about the stance you know it's your hands it's your feet it's you know it's all of the smaller things actually leading up to the actual swing if we're you know kind mm -hmm. of being honest about it and so now I know this off season and you've kind of hinted at this when you answered one of the previous questions is how your swing path is what you're really focusing on now and how that's totally changing. And I call it the uppercut. It's not that drastic and it's really not. It's just not what I'm used to seeing, especially from you. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like that. Um, but so, and going back to you kind of explained this, that wanting to get more power. And so what has that process for you kind of been like when you really have just been focusing on things maybe before you actually swing and now you're really focusing on a total different swing path. I think all the the stuff you do before your actual swing, everybody's different. Everybody has different feels and cues that they have in their head about how to get to certain points in their swing. Uh, but all that doesn't really matter. You look at big leaguers; they all have different gathers. They all have different timing mechanisms that they uh, think about when trying to get to that beginning point of their swing and their mm -hmm. swing path. So just trying to figure out what works best for me as a particular, just me, just trying to think, okay, this this is what Mike Trout does. Does it work for me? No, it doesn't. So we rule that out. So you just got to figure out what works best for you. So that's what we've been doing. Um, like I said, all that stuff doesn't matter. It all begins with the stuff that really matters is the swing path and what uh, angle that, because the ball's coming in at a downward angle like this, right? It's not coming in flat, it's not coming in up. 
So to get the best your bat to be in the path on playing with the pitch for as long as possible, what is that? That's an uppercut. So yeah. if you swing flat here, here's flat, you have that margin of hitting the ball square. If you swing down, it's even smaller. So why not have your swing path be a little bit up and you just have that much more room to have solid contact. I know, like this off season, I've been watching you practice the uppercut and get, and get used to the different, to get used to the launch. And what the most interesting thing that you've said to me that I've heard in kind of your reasoning is how we're taught. And when I played, when you played, it was always, if you're hitting the ball line drive to the back of the cage, that's a perfect swing. That's what you want to be doing every time. And then I remember you, it was the, it was not that at all. It's like for you, if you have the new launch path swing that you're trying to get, it's you're hitting the ball, like, what did you say? Three, three four? Three fours of the way up the cage. It's not going to hit the back of the net. But I it's going to hit like the top. line drive's good, but it, you can hit a line drive and it's going to be right to the second baseman. Um, but if you have a better launch angle, you hit that... You can even hit the ball not as hard and it's going to be a double whereas if you don't have that line angle you hit the ball harder the hardest ball hit all of last year in the big leagues was a ground ball to second base at double play so <laughs> really when if you have the exit velocity it doesn't really matter unless you pair it with the correct launch angle and that's i mean you, a launch angle that's a zero launch angle and the average in the big leagues is somewhere in between I think I want it's like 11 to 19 or something like or 11 to 25 but anyways what I'm saying is you want that ball to come off your bat at a higher launch angle because if you hit a hard line drive or a, a ground ball that an infield that's within the infielders reach each level you move up those infielders are that much faster and like the plays that they make are incredible like you look at Angelton Simmons the plays he make, nobody else in, in the lower levels is going to make that play. So it, each level you move up, if you have that higher launch angle, then you're going to continue getting on base. But if you don't, then some of those balls that squeak through the infield are, are you're going to start cutting down and your average is going to start lowering and uh, your on base percentage, all those little stats and things that help you get on base, you're just not going to see those numbers. Uh, continue to be where they're at. Yeah. Well, I'll just say that I'm interested to see how this season goes and how long. Not that not that you're not going to stick it out, but just to see how it kind of plays out and if it is going to. You might not be hitting the ball as hard, but you might be getting even more hits because you're hitting it in the gap. And to me, like when you explain it to me, that's what it is. It's trying to find another advantage. It's not so much about hitting it hard, but as it is, just lifting it a little more to find the gaps. And I have to choke up a lot. Oh, that's fast. Here's the tornado. Ow! Late. You're gonna kill me. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna be serious. Whoa! <laughs> now I'm gonna be serious. Swing a mess. Why are your hands so still? Because <laughs> that's how I like. Every hitter's different, remember? There we go. That was better. Ground ball to second base. Shut up. Woo! That was a cage ball <laughs> if I've ever seen one. Just kidding. I never even hit a home run in my career. I did, but it was foul. That was sad. <laughs> 